Lord for the opportunity to teach your word and to preach your word. I pray Lord you give me the Holy Spirit O Lord in full uh, in fullness of measure so I can teach your word as you have me teach it. Let me not speak of myself and prepare our hearts to listen and to uh, and read your word and to prove these things I've said Lord in Jesus name I pray. Alright, um, then in Leviticus chapter 13 verse 45 it says, and the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, Unclean, unclean. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. Without the camp shall his habitation be. Uh, the Bible teaches a lot about leprosy. Uh, there are many lep leprosy stories in the Bible. And um, I'm going to be doing a three-part series on leprosy. So it's going to, I'm going to preach on leprosy for the rest of this month. Um, so please, uh, I'm just going to be preaching on it. Don't think you'll get leprosy by coming to church. I'm just kidding. So make sure you come to church. Uh, I'm going to preach on leprosy. There's a lot to learn from leprosy. And when I'm done, it doesn't mean I've covered it completely. So you should still read your Bible. There's still a whole lot more to talk about it. Um, leprosy is a big deal in the Bible. And even in these days, leprosy is a big deal. It's, it's still a big deal. Uh, what can we learn from leprosy, physically and spiritually? What can we learn? So that's what I'm going to be teaching on. My topic this morning, I'm starting off, is leprosy, a picture of sin. Leprosy, a picture of sin. You say, Pastor, man, this Bible reading is so long. <laughs> but this is what the priest had to do. Remember, we are priests now. So just think about it. This Look at all the requirements. This is just one of the requirements. I mean, they have to be meeting with people that are possibly or potentially leprous. People that are leprous, but, you know, the thing is, is, is going. So when it goes, they still have to check the person. Is it coming back? After they deal with the person back and forth, oh, your hair is falling off. Is that leprosy? Oh, no, he's just being bowed. Oh, he's not leprous. He's clean. Oh, the hair is falling off, but there's something there. This is what the priest has to go through. After they deal with the people, then they deal with their clothes. <laughs> so now it's a clothes leprous. You say, but why do you care about clothes? It's because you're living in the day and age where you just throw away your clothes. Number one. And I, it's not your fault because the clothes are made up of what? Processed cotton and it, 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 it's brittle. After a while, it's gone. But back then, clothes, I mean, made up of skin, real leather that the person dried up and it's very expensive. It's, it can last a man for years and years. And they don't have that much clothes because they don't have all this design. You know, now we have machines that makes patterns and designs and stuff. No, it's somebody, it's like the mother also making the clothes for them. And, you know, the man goes, catches an animal, you know, skins it, dries it. He makes his clothes according to the pattern of that animal skin. So uh, there was no amount, oh, this is trending or that is trending. This pattern is trending. So they could just wear one garment for a long time. And to show you how expensive a garment is, Jesus was telling disciples that, hey, if you don't have weapons, go sell your garment and buy you a sword. To show now, can you sell your suit, even if it's Ahmadi suit or Leo Vuitton? Or you can't sell it to buy a weapon. I mean, maybe you can sell Leo Vuitton. But you get my point. <laughs> These days, your suit or my suit is not going to buy me anything. Not even knife or something. But... Um, those days, it was very expensive. So that's why they had to look into the garment. It's not something, oh, he had leprosy, let's just throw away his garment. No, the garment is still very useful. Let's see, is it, can we use it? Is it clean enough? That's why they had to go through all these things. I just wanted to give us a perspective on it and see how long and going into details because leprosy is a picture of sin. So you see all the details you have to go through. That's just starting off. All right. What is leprosy? What is leprosy? Leprosy is still a disease of today. Today, it's also known as the Hansen disease. You know, it's a cool name for leprosy. Hansen's disease. As if Hansen was the one that found it. But let's keep going. It's a long-term infection. That's what leprosy is. I mean, you could have leprosy and it could stay for like 30 years. It could be like all your life kind of thing uh, when you get it. Uh, it also, it's a bacterial infection. It's not a uh, vi uh, virus or viral infection. Uh, the infection can go without symptoms for about 5 to 20 years. So you could have leprosy and not even know you have leprosy. You see why the priest had to go through all these details. And you say God does not know anything about science. See, the Bible knew science before science knew, uh, before scientists these days know science. So God knew about these germs. God knew about bacteria. He knew how they work. And when it says quick raw flesh, quick just means alive. So you see flesh that is alive, 
spurring out then oh yeah that is leprosy so the priests they knew these things God told them to wash with running water all this just to keep themselves from germs because God had promised that the tribe of Israel or the, 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 the nation of Israel is going to last other nations could just die out out of a plague you know because they are dirty but God wanted clean cleanness and you know some people were shut up to, to quarantine you see quarantine that's what when it says shut up in a place or you know they were quarantining people so they don't spread the infection until the priest says okay he's clean let him go don't shut him up so um, it's, it's, a, it's an infection that can go for 5 to 20 years without seeing the symptoms now what some effect or effects I should say of leprosy uh, include loss of the ability to feel pain so your nerves your nerve endings will be dead you can't feel pain I mean literally fire could be burning your hand you won't know until you look oh wow fire is burning my that, that's what leprosy can do to you so uh, in fact I'll go to go through them one at a time I'll focus more on them number two loss of extremities that means your limbs your fingers why would you lose your extremities it goes in part with loss of the ability to feel pain how do you know somebody is stepping on your toes it's because you feel it ouch how do you know something heavy landed on your toes because you feel it and because you felt it before when you see heavy things <laughs> you know the pain you know the feel now if you can't feel it someone can just chop off your toes or your fingers and you won't even know until you see blood you be like where's this blood coming from i remember cutting myself one time in the bathroom i didn't know i just hit my toe and i cut myself and i just thought i hit my toe i was feeling the pain but i just thought i hit my toe so i looked at the uh, the, the mats in the bathroom i was like why is there blood oh <laughs> so i would have known you know imagine if i didn't feel anything i'm like so where is the blood coming from I, but I, I felt a pain but I just thought it was nothing until you see blood everywhere so that's what happened to leprous people they lose that's why leprous people start losing their fingers slowly start losing their extremities you know their ears is chopping off things are just chopping off their hair falling out stuff like that another effect of leprosy is weakness you know they, they get weak you know naturally their strength is dying because leprosy is killing was killing them slowly the body's fighting it but it's killing them slowly and another effect is poor eyesight see i think the, the whole there's a whole list of effects of leprosy i'm not going to go through all of them i just picked these ones because i wanted to touch them spiritually leprosy is a picture of sin and let's look at these ones spiritually and see how it applies um, open your Bibles to James chapter 1 James chapter 1 as I said the picture of sin let's take it as a parable it's not you know perfect one to one you know no parable is perfect it's just showing you what it, it is like sort of using the physical to explain the spiritual so it's a long term disease sin is also a long sin is also long term right let's put it that way sin is also long term it could take years for the symptoms to show but the end thereof is death so if you leave sin in you you might not even know that this is destroying you those symptoms will show right maybe you're stealing and stealing in fact you're looking better and better you have this you have that by the end is destruction you know in one sin will lead to another sin to another sin that's how leprosy works you know the bacteria is growing it's growing it's not even a virus that's the thing about leprosy it's not a vi you know viruses they just multiply and they just take over your whole body and that's it you're gone but bacteria you know is slower and you can there's yeah, something called anti, uh, uh, what's it called? antibacterial. I don't even know what it's called again now. Antibacterial, right? So something that can kill bacteria. But what do you do about virus? You know. So, but it's not even a virus. You're there in James chapter one. Uh, sin is long term. James chapter one verse twelve. The Bible says, "Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him." Let no man say when he is tempted, "I am tempted of God," for God cannot be tempted with, uh, with evil, neither tempted he any man. Verse fourteen. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. See, that's when it begins. This is the beginning. You don't even know what's going on. You're being drawn away from your own loss and enticed, verse 15. Then, when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So, 
it leading to death because the wages of sin is death and that's what leprosy does it starts you can once you catch it you can easily clean it off or you know wash and fight it but if you don't catch it or you don't even know because symptoms are not showing for 5 to 20 years and you're, you're still living in dirt you're, you're, you're dirty or unclean I should say at the end is death and you get to a point where you cannot change it what are examples of this of sin not reading your bible Oh, it's just, you're not reading your Bible. It's just nothing. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, God has told you to read your, the Bible. If not, you're dying slowly. So, uh, you're not reading your Bible to lead to another sin. You know, not reading your Bible will lead to sin, basically, because you're now feeding the flesh. And the flesh should now do the lust of the flesh, which is against what the Spirit wants. So, the lust, uh, they, they're against each other. Um, so not reading your Bible or not praying. We talked about praying here. So the right kind of prayer too. Not attending church. Uh, uh, the end result of untrained children. See, you are not training your children. You know what the end is going to be. It's because foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. And the rod of correction drives it far from him. So don't pity. Uh, uh, beat the child as the Bible says. It doesn't say, you know, harm the child. Just beat the child as the Bible says. And you will save his soul from hell. That's what the Bible says. You know. So an another sin, divorce. Yeah, it leads and leads to more and more, more sin. Uh, another sin, uh, mighty to drink wine. Oh yeah, I can hold my liquor, right? You're mighty to drink wine. You know, you gotta drink it slowly and until you can drink four cups without you know moving or shaking. That's what you think. And um, pride, I mean, just list any sin. You, you start doing it and the end thereof is destruction. You might not see the symptoms now because it's a long-term thing. You might not see it as long term. Okay? So the symptoms of some of these might take years to show. Open your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 24. 1 Timothy 5, 24. So it'll take years to show because you can't see it now. Don't think it is not breeding, it's not growing in you. Like leprosy, it might be covered by your garment. See, the priest was supposed to look at some people, and some people it's hidden in their garment, some people it's in their forehead, some people it's on their head, some people it's all over their body. You know? So sometimes the leprosy might start maybe you know in in in, in your uh, in a part covered by your garment let's put it that way and no one might call the priest to come and look at it and you know no one might see it to show the priest and you yourself because you don't want to be put out of the camp you don't want to show the priest you're like handling it handling it and you're mixing with people right you're mixing with people and you're going to start spreading it very soon see how dangerous sin is oh i can handle it you don't want to just you know do what god says you know, now we're all priests, so you can examine yourself. I'll get to that point. But you don't do what God says. You want to just hide it. You know, sin can be covered by your garments. As lep uh, covered by, you know, you dress up well, you look well, you, everything is going on well. But what are you? You're a whited sepulchre. You're stealing. You're committing fornication, adultery. But when you come to church, you lift up holy hands with the brethren. You see, you're covering the sin. Right? So, uh, but for some... For some, they cannot cover the leprosy because it's on their beard, it's on their forehead, right? It's on the face of the, uh, So some people cannot cover the leprosy, while some people can cover the leprosy. It depends on where it breaks out. Remember King Uzziah, or Uzziah, right? King Uzziah, he wanted to uh, um, offer bonds, fire, incense in the temple of God. And the priests were like, no, you can't do it. You're not supposed to do it. It's only the priest that's supposed to do it. And Uzziah was, you know, mad at them and, you know, was angry with them. He still wanted to burn strange fires by. Bible say and what did God do God broke out leprosy on his forehead on his forehead so it's not like in his body where you hide it straight on his forehead so he was shut out in his house until he died so that's how King Uzziah a man of God because he thought he could do more than what God told him to do he's like you're trying to take oh yeah pastor I, I, I'm supposed to be the pastor or something you know um, you might be a man of God you might be doing the right things but just that one thing you know because God hates it when you go out of your place like a woman going out of her place or her roles or a man going out of his own role you know things like that God wants you to do what he says you should do no more no less all right you're there in first Timothy chapter 5 verse 24 I was saying some leprosy can be covered some leprosy can't be covered by your garments and in first Timothy 5 24 the Bible says some men's sins are open beforehand going before to judgment and some men follow after what am i talking about there are some people you see them with the tattoos right all over their body you know gang signs all of that tattoos all over their body and you look at the person you're like wow 
dude, you, 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 you lived in the world, right? I mean, it's so clear that they were worldly people, that they didn't know God, all of that. Why are there some people, you, you didn't know that they just came from the club, yes, last night. So it's covered. Right, it, but it's, it's going to show afterwards. You know, those people going to club, those people hiding their sins, sins that you can't see. While there are some other people that have been smoking their teeth, where they say, Ah, brother, how you doing? Back, ooh, you know, the teeth, you know, smoke, everything. You can see the sin on some people's body, <laughs> right? While some people you can't see the sin, uh, and uh, or the addressing or things like that. Some men's sins are beforehand, some other men's sins are. Uh, uh, will follow after so everyone sins just know that because you can see someone sin and because you, you can see another person sin doesn't mean one person is better than another so the bible makes it very clear to us so that's how leprosy is all the le lepro leprous people some is hidden in the garment some is in the forehead all right what are some effects of sin because we looked at uh, the effects of leprosy what are some effects of sin number one I'm just going to give you three so i said the loss of ability to feel pain and the losing of extremities i'll just combine them in one so number one loss of ability to feel pain so let's look at three uh, the spiritual application for that emotionally it means loss of feelings you know when you lose feeling open to matthew chapter 14 you you, you don't feel pain anymore right when you're leprous that's one of the symptoms, what, what it gives you. You don't feel pain, no nerves, nothing. You, you're just who you are. So you might feel like you're strong. Imagine someone punches you and you don't feel the pain. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. Wow, I don't feel pain. No matter how much my parents spank me, no pain. No matter how much. So, but you think, oh yeah, I don't have I, loss of feelings spiritually. That's how it affects you. Uh, uh, when you when you have sin in your life, you, uh, you start losing feelings. We need our emotional part in order to do spiritual work for God. You say, Pastor, I don't need to be to have physical emotions. I don't need to have that. See, Jesus was angry. <laughs> you know, it's called holy anger right we all have anger in us the bible says be angry so be angry but do not sin you see that so you can be angry you need that emotion you need to have the holy hand. you need to see what's going on in the world you need to and be angry and do something so that's emotion the other emotion you know it can be compassion see the bible shows that jesus was moved with compassion for many of his miracles you're there in matthew 14 matthew 14 verse 14 the bible says jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick Jesus was moved with compassion. You say, oh, okay, that's just for miracles. I'm not doing miracles, so I don't need compassion. Open to Mark 10. Mark 10. Jesus used compassion also during soul winning. Yes, God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. You need compassion. Because when you don't have compassion for the souls that are being lost, oh, I don't care, I'm going to heaven. Uh, I'm going to church, I'm reading my Bible. So I'm not going to do, I'm just going to, how about it? I'm just going to live my life. You, you don't have feelings anymore. You're there in Mark 10, chapter seven, uh, verse 17. Mark 10, 17. It's a story. I want to read the story a little bit. We're all familiar with it. But you see that Jesus had compassion, even when many of us might not even have compassion. We might just, mm, let's just move on to the next door. But look, look at what the Bible says. And when he was gone, from verse 17, and when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do? Uh, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. So, obviously, we can already see that this guy has a lot of problems, a lot of issues. First of all, he's uh, flattering Jesus by calling him good master. It's only God that is good. So, are you calling me God? I am God, truly, but do you really believe that? You don't believe that, so don't flatter me. Ah, man of God, pastor, uh, you know. Don't flatter God, don't flatter people, you know. So he already sees that, but he tells him, okay, since you want to hear, what can I do? This is what you have to do. Obey all the laws. Be perfect. The guy said, oh, I'm perfect. You just tell the person, you know what, okay, nice meeting you. Right? <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> you're perfect. You've never seen, not once. You're Donald Trump's brother or something. I don't know. Right? You're perfect. You've done all these things from your youth upwards. So, we, we just move on. We just say this person is a fool. We cannot even accept that he's a sinner. Right? But look at what the Bible says. Verse 21. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up thy, the cross, and follow me. 
open to Jude. So you can see that Jesus just looked at him and said, I, not, I mean, he just looked at him and loved him. It's like, this guy, <laughs> he's so lost, such a fool. He doesn't even know anything. But you know what? I know what you lack. Let me just, just try and fix this first before he, then we can start, you know, th then you can have hope of going to heaven. He knew he wasn't going to go to heaven. Jesus said it's going to be very hard for a rich man to go to heaven. That's when you, I mean, if you read down the story. So it's going to be hard for a rich man, but he still loved him. He still did so winning. You know, I can knock at someone's door and the person is like giving me all the wrong answers. I mean, before, I want to do all my due diligence. Jesus did all his due diligence. He told him the right thing to do. Now, we are not Jesus. We don't know every man's weak point or stuff. So you just do, preach the gospel. That's all. You don't have to tell them, you see this in your nice house that you're living in, sell it. <laughs> I mean, that's not what the Bible is saying to do. Jesus knows his heart. Jesus knows where his problem is. We are not Jesus, amen? So you just tell the person, hey, believe on the Lord Jesus. You know, it's not by your works. That's all. So that's when we're, when we're doing so, and that's what you need to do. All right. So the next point here, the Bible tells us to have compassion. You say, oh, okay, yes, pastor is saying you should have compassion. That's nice. But does the Bible command us to have compassion? Yes, the Bible does. Right? If you keep reading from Genesis, you read Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, you know what I mean? You, know, you just keep reading, 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 reading. You probably get to Jude before Revelation. So when you get to Jude, <laughs> verse 22, that's why you got to read your whole Bible, right? <laughs> yeah, I've been reading. I'm already in, you know, Acts of the Apostles or, or, or Philemon or something. I'm not saying the Bible says have compassion. Really? Okay, so in Jude chapter 1, there's only one chapter, verse 22 and 23, the Bible says, and of some have compassion making a difference. Uh, that, that's direct. That's telling you to have compassion. So when you lose feelings, you don't feel for people. I, I don't know. Is, is that some kind of leprosy in your life? Um, and so, so, and so, for some, have compassion, making a difference, verse 23, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now, when it says hating even the garment spotted by the flesh, what does it remind you of? Our Bible reading. Did you see all what the priests had to go through with the garments? Right? See, pain is necessary for survival, right? And having compassion is necessary, you know, to do the work of God, to do uh, what God wants us to do. Now, when God says have compassion and save these people, right, the priest, do, who, who do you think the priest wants to save more? The person or his garment? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So the priest wants to save the guy, and as he's trying to save the guy, he's hating the garment spotted by that quick flesh, you know, the, the, fle the spores. So he doesn't want the garment. He's like, you know, go and wash, you know, stay the, the place. He wants to save the person. But he hates the garment spotted by that flesh. That's what, you know, Jude, these people are preaching from the Bible. They didn't have New Testament when they were preaching. They were writing the New Testament. So they are preaching about sin, about soul winning, from Leviticus, as I'm preaching right now. So you read it, you're like, Pastor, why, why are we reading all this? This is what they preach from, from the early church. And that's why they were doing great, mighty. All scripture is, is re, uh, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for, uh, for correction, so that man of God may be perfect, lacking nothing. That's what the Bible says. Amen. I probably paraphrased that one a little bit. But all scripture is useful. So this is useful. I know it's kind of long, but it was useful. Reading it to show you all the parts. So the garment is put up by the flesh. You hate that garment, but you want to save the person. Because the person is like leprous. You're, you're going there, you're trying to teach them, but the priest still had to go in there. Even if it, the spurs were coming out, the priest still had to go in there and help that person. And see, oh, let's put you apart. Let's try and go wash yourself. Telling the person what he needs to do. But there are some people that the priest cannot help. Right? There's some, there's some leprous people. Okay, he sees the thing changing. He says, okay, guys, stay for a little bit. There's some people who can't help. Because when they come back, that's come up again. Or when they come back, it might be white. So they'll say, okay, yeah, you're clean. Now you can come out. Now, they might still have scars and spots and stuff. But after a while, what happens to the skin? It keeps peeling off. It keeps peeling off. And they look better. They look like all us. Right? So new believers come in here. They might look all, all leprous. Right? But it's all whited out. Right? After a while, they keep being clean and not living in uncleanness. Guess what? Their skin will come back normal. Their garments will be washed. Do you see that? Leprosy is a picture of sin. So yeah, pain is necessary for survival. And stopping only, or sorry, tr how about it? Don't try to fix only the headache. 
right? And now I'm giving you physical application. <laughs> when you have a headache, it's not just that your head just felt like paining you. There's something wrong. <laughs> headache is a sign that, hey, something is wrong. Yeah, you, you're, maybe you're falling sick from something else or falling sick from something. But maybe you have a headache, you know, you go straight to Panadol Extra. I'm kidding. You go straight to Tylenol. <laughs> or, I don't know what, what we buy here. Something. You go straight to a, a medicine uh, so that you fall just for the headache. Oh, I have a headache. Let me fix the headache. Fix the headache. Fix the headache. While something else is dying in your body, something else is being affected, then you fall sick because you're no more feeling the headache anymore. So you continue, walk, maybe overworking yourself, or you, I don't know what was happening, but you continue doing that thing you were doing because you don't feel the headache, right? Instead of, don't just try to fix the headache. The headache, pain, emotions, is trying to get your attention. Wow, see what's going on in the world. And that's why God wants us to go so winning. Because when you knock at people's doors, at the end of that, you'll be like, man, I need to come back and continue. People are lost. So people think nobody else can go to heaven. So people are saying, oh, it's only 144,000 people going to heaven. Really? That's what you believe? Like, are people this lost? So it's like a wake-up call. Hey, it is, <laughs> people are going to hell in batches because they just don't know. So uh, pain is to get your attention. And if it doesn't get that, if your, your attention is not being gotten, you're going to destroy yourself. Open to your First Timothy chapter four. First Timothy chapter four. So the loss of the ability to feel pain is also the searing of the conscience. You know, when your conscience is seared, like with a hot iron, you, you can't feel anymore. Uh, God is telling you to do something, but you don't feel it. You feel, oh, I'm fine. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. Your, your conscience is seared concerning that. Oh, that one is for you people. I can't do that. Uh, reading your Bible thing. Mm. I can't just be reading my Bible, reading my Bible. I'll just come to church. I mean, I'll come to church. I'll listen. Um, I don't have to. No, no, no. Don't sear your conscience concerning things because then you're losing your ability to feel. You're no more feeling. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So their conscience are seared with a hot iron because they are losing their, their ability to feel, to feel pain, to feel have compassion, all those. You're just seared your country with hot iron and I believe that's an application in Titus chapter 1 verse 15 you now have to open there Titus 1 15 says unto the pure all things are pure but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure but even their mind and conscience is defiled remember it says the, the leprous man is defiled Right? So, unto the pure, all things are pure. But them that are defiled, unto them are defiled and unbelieving, guess what? Nothing is pure. Everything is defiled. They are, even their mind, even their conscience is seared. They can't feel anymore. Alright, the next application, another effect of um, uh, leprosy is weakness. Weakness. Open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to be reading from verse 10. Weakness. God commands us to be strong spiritually. I mean, God says be strong. As you see, then Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to, to uh, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. See, leprous people, by the time they start losing their extremities and stuff, they can't even stand. They can't wear an armor. They can't join the men to go and fight. They are weak. They become weaklings. You know, it slowly but surely it gets to that point. Um, so, uh, the Bible says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So, we should be strong so that we can, we can fight for God. But if you're not strong in the Lord, then maybe sin is the chink in your armor. Maybe sin is penetrating into your life so leprosy examine yourself right check yourself because sin will make you spiritually weak 
you will not have the armor of God, you will not be able to stand or withstand. And this Bible, as I said, will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from the Bible. Let's look at the third point here, the third spiritual application, poor eyesight. Poor eyesight. Leprous people will start having poor eyesight. In Romans chapter 1, verse 17, Romans chapter 1, verse 17, he said, Pastor, you could just use this for AIDS too. You could use this for many diseases also. Yes, it's a disease. Sin is a disease. It's a sickness. It's killing you. The end of all these things is death. But leprosy is a very good one because people in the Bible, they just think, uh, like in the Bible days, once you have leprosy, it's like, whoa, you sinned. <laughs> It's just associated with sin. Now, it's not necessarily associated with sin. Like, if you have leprosy right now, it doesn't mean, oh yeah, you lived in sin or something. But throughout the Bible, you see it quickly associated with sin. Once somebody has leprosy, they believe it's just a punishment from God. Because when God wants to punish somebody, like Miriam, just leprosy. Yeah, this leprosy. Leprosy. You know, all of that. So, it's not necessarily associated with sin. because you, as, I mean, it's not necessarily because of sin. Because as you can see in the Levites, when they were going through it, they didn't say, oh, once you see the white spot, but tell him to go and give an offering for the sins he has committed. You see, you didn't see that. But it doesn't mean God using it to punish sin uh, that is wrong. I mean, God can use it to punish sin. So, one of the effects, as I said, is poor eyesight. You're there in Romans chapter 1, verse 17. It says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So, when you are living by your physical eyesight, I mean, oh, it's what you see, right? For example, when you work for God, what blessings do you get? You don't see the blessings that you get because you are being saved in heaven. The see, Bible says the things that we see are temporal. The things that we do not see are eternal, right? Put your affections on the things above. So you're working for God, you're doing all these things, but your bank account is not increasing. In fact, it's decreasing. <laughs> You know, uh, I know problems are happening in your life, but you but God, I'm working for you. God, I'm doing all these things for you. But you're, you, you're living by what? Your sight, not by faith. You're supposed to live by faith and not by sight because the just will live by faith. If not, you just die quickly. If you're going to live, it's going to be by faith. You're going to keep going because he that want to keep his life will lose it. And he that shall lose his life for my sake shall gain it. That's what the Bible says. Same thing said in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. You don't have to open it. It says, now the just shall live by faith. But if any or any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Oh yeah, Pentecostals means you're going to hell. Really? Uh, Demas is burning in hell. All this people are burning. No. They are all saved people. Just that God does not have pleasure on you. He's not happy with you. Oh wait, you think God was happy with Peter when he denied him? You think Jesus was happy with Peter when he found him fishing? He wasn't happy. Read, read the, 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 uh, John. I mean, no man durst ask him any question. They are like, let's just be quiet. It's as if you know, catch your kids, right? <laughs> In the wrong thing. And they are just quiet. Yeah. No. Anyway, let me not digress. So, the um, Bible says, the judge shall live by faith. Now, your measure of faith is from the amount of God's word you have in you. You know? If you abide in me, and I in you, you know, all of that. Then you ask whatever your father in my name, and he'll give it to you. So, you have to abide in him, and I in you. And you say, oh, Jesus abides in us. And evidence is by the Holy Ghost in us. So it's, your, it's, it's up to you now. Jesus is doing his own part. Are you doing your, your own part? And I was talking about poor eyesight. Because you know, as soon as you have leprosy, you can't see. You know, your eyesight gets, start getting dimmer and dimmer. So that's what sin does. Sin creeps into your life. Your eyesight starts getting dimmer. I'll show you in the Bible. But the Bible actually says that, you know, you should not do this. Eh, but, but how about... Hello? You can't see clearly anymore in the spiritual. Why? Because of sin. Maybe it's covetousness. Maybe it's lost for something. So you want to find a way where the Bible justifies your sin. The Bible says if you cover your sin, you shall not prosper. That's what the Bible says. So just open it up and just confess it to God. Oh, David committed a lot of sins. But when did David cover his own sin? He, oh, you are the man that did this. You took this person's lamb and you, you, you when you had all this other lamb and you sacrificed this poor man's lamb. I'm sorry. Forgive me. He didn't say, uh, but, 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 but he was fighting for me. I mean, why was she outside? <laughs> Do you see that? Show me where the Bible says, Do you didn't say no woman of, 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 of the children of Israel should be a whore? Do you not know what the Bible said? Did you see him argue? You think he didn't know Bible to argue? David knew the Bible very well. And see me, I'm even bringing up, I didn't even think about it, trust me. <laughs> I'm bringing up arguments just from the top of my head. Why was she outside? Why was she, why, it's not my fault. I mean, all men say, why? He, she didn't, he didn't say any of that. He just said, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, straight up. Don't cover your sin because his eyes were open. Yeah, he, the leprosy was right there. God sent guy to go and help him out, and his eyes were open. Immediately he saw it. He's like, I'm not yet that blind because he has a lot of the word of God in you. So don't have the poor eyesight problem. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. In Romans 12, verse 3, now I've opened a popular verse. For I say, uh, for I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So we have different measures of faith. And he said, hey, Pastor, why is your own so great? You can read the Bible too. You see, it's the same Holy Spirit, you know, it's the same one spirit. It's not like I have a different Holy Spirit. You know, everyone has the same Holy Spirit. See, we're, we're all sheep. Amen? I mean, I just have a role to play. It's just like man and women. No, no one is inferior to another. But they all have different roles. So increase your measure of faith. And increase even more than the pastor. Amen? Increase. Just read the Bible. Sin causes you to be spiritually blind, slowly but surely. Because the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Now, leprosy is a contagious disease. Leprosy is a contagious disease. We open to Leviticus chapter 13. Uh, back to our Bible reading. Look at verse 45. Uh, so, sin also is contagious. Leprosy is contagious, sin is contagious. The Bible says in verse 45, And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put on a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, Unclean! Unclean! All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled, he is unclean, he shall dwell alone, without a camp shall his habitation be. So what is God saying? I'm sure people are like, God just has all these rituals. Why does he have to put a cloth over his upper lip? Right? Right here. He has to put a cloth. I wish I had a handkerchief to demonstrate this. He had to put a cloth over his upper lip. And if he leaves his house, anywhere he's going, this is what he's doing. Unclean! 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 See, if you're passing and somebody shouting unclean, <laughs> would you shift? Because God knew exactly how the thing spread. Do I have it here in my notes? I guess I don't, because I memorized it. Leprosy spreads through, I thought I had it actually. Leprosy spreads through coffin. Yeah, through coffin. I thought I wrote it down. Through coffin, nose fluids. That's how it spreads. It is contagious, but it's not highly contagious. That's how leprosy is. It's not highly contagious, but it is contagious. It's not like, you know, I don't know, some diseases are very contagious, just breathing in and out. You've already spread it. But it has to be the nose flu. The fluid of somebody that has leprosy, that you can now see the symptoms on the person. Once, you, for example, okay, let me finish my statement. The fluid of somebody that has leprosy, that the symptoms are showing, if that fluid touches you, or then you can, and enters your body, then you could have leprosy. I mean, if your skin is broken somewhere, you could have leprosy. If you're unfortunate, you have big spores, like hair spores, then it could break into your skin and you can have leprosy. That's how, so it's, it's actually very difficult. I mean, not very difficult. It's actually not that easy to uh, get leprosy just by standing next to somebody having leprosy. I mean, you read stories, maybe next other sermons, you read stories in the Bible where the king called in leprous people and was talking to the people. Right? So, it's not like, uh, or where those four leper, lepers, they found food, and they went to call the people, people like, well, we're not touching it, all you lepers have touched it. No, they were hungry. <laughs> anyway, you, I'll, I'll get to all those stories. Let's just focus on, see, it's a picture of sin. So it is contagious, but it's not highly contagious. It comes through nose fluids. And Jesus knew that. God knew that in his laws, he said they should cover their nose and shout unclean to warn people. Isn't God wise? Doesn't he know science before science was known by man? See, the Bible says the king that uncovers something is for his own pleasure. Ah, geez, I'm, I'm misquoting it. Let me, let me read it. Proverbs chapter 16. Is it 16? No. Okay. Maybe it's Proverbs chapter 10. Okay, I can't find it. <laughs> it's talking about a king. Uh, it says the things that God hides, if the king finds it. Anyway, I can't find it, sorry. But the, uh, and everything that we discover, everything that we find is God that wants us to discover it. He, 
uh, it, it was hidden from them what germs and diseases were. But now, the Bible says at the end, knowledge shall increase. So people know all these things. And they are now applying it as if the Bible never talked about it. So I just wanted to prove to you that, number one point, God knew all these things. But leprosy, just like sin, it spreads. So it's not highly contagious, but it is contagious. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, open to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. For leprosy to spread, the point I wanted to make is, imagine somebody that has leprosy, but the symptoms are not showing. Right? The symptoms are not showing. That means it has not yet affected the fluids of the person. So even if the person coughs and sneezes and all on you, it's not going to affect you. But once the symptoms start showing, maybe it might be hidden in their garments though, but once the symptoms start showing of leprosy, then that person needs to cover his nose because now it is contagious, it can spread easily. For example, somebody starts living in sin, right? In the church, start living in sin, the symptoms are not showing. It's hard. I mean, person's hiding it very well. You don't even know he's committing fornication or she's committing fornication. You don't even know it. You can still fellowship with the person. Nothing's going to affect you. But once it starts showing where, okay, the person is now inviting you to do the wrong thing. Hey, come, let's do this. Hey, come. Now it can affect you. So... I'm just giving you that application. But sin requires a relationship or a fellowship in order to affect another person. Sin, you have to have a relationship with the person. You have to have a kind of fellowship with the person in order to affect another person. And that's why God not say, Jesus not pray that he removes us from the world, but keeps us from the evil of the world. Because if sin could just be affected just by you staying in the same room with the person, then we're not supposed to work any secular job. <laughs> We're supposed to buy our farm and just farm there and eat the corn or the maize that comes out from it. Um, but sin, you have to have a relationship with the person. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, this is what the Bible says in verse 14, popular passage. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion had light with darkness, and what concord had Christ with Belial, or what part had he that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement had the temple of God with idols, for ye are the temple of the living God, as God had said. I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and I will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Almighty God. Open to Romans chapter 16. So, the unbelievers, God is saying, don't be un unequally yoked to them. Don't have a relationship with them. Unbelievers are going to pull you down. They are going to infect you with leprosy. Amen? Talking about that as sin. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> in case, okay, I'm just trying to be clear. So they're going to infect you with the sin, and you're, you're going to start doing the sin. They're doing, oh, let's go and hang out in the happy bar, uh, um, happy hour. Let's go and, you know, do all those things. You start hanging out with them, you start doing all those things. Hey, why don't you come for the church events, the church fellowships? That's how you grow, amen? As opposed to, oh, my friends, and this world, you're being unequally yoked with them. I preach about that many times. Now, that's unbelievers. Some believers too are infected. Some believers are infected. And guess what? It's more dangerous. Why is it more dangerous? Because your guards are down. You're unaware of the fact. A believer is telling you this or telling you that. You're like, oh yeah, he's a brother in Christ. Oh yeah, I mean, I've seen him talking with the pastor. The pastor shook his hands, you know, so that's great. So let's just go ahead. So it might be dangerous, you know, for believers. Look at what the Bible says in Romans 16, verse 16. You're in Romans 16, 16. The Bible says, salute one another with an holy kiss. Remember, this are, remember, if you're leprous, you have to cover your nose, right? Bible is even saying, hey, as believers, <laughs> forget about our leprosy stuff, right? You know, that's how they greeted people. Um, salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them. After it says salute brothers a holy kiss. Now it says mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. So mark them and avoid them. So because they don't want to shout unclean unclean right you mark them and avoid them it's for your own good because it's dangerous for you because you are supposed to be brother uh, one or uh, what do you call it one another right we're supposed to be brothers we are as as it's where equally yoked right we're equally yoked one purpose one mind one body yeah. That's the church so when the person is infected uh, uh, infected with leprosy whoa you, you need to mark them and avoid them yeah. Did God say, oh, mark the unbelievers in, in the world and avoid them? <laughs> no. He just said, don't be unequally yoked with them. You can hang out, stay with them because your guards are up. You know, your immune system is up when you're with them. Eh? <laughs> you're like, hey, I, I, come on, join us. No, no, no. I know you're unclean. You know, that kind of thing. But the brothers says, mark them, avoid them. Verse 18, 
For they that for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. He says, those people that have leprosy that are part of the brothers, they don't serve God. Oh, you think they're serving God? Oh, I want to do, you see, I'm just going to serve God this way, but they're not following the doctrine that God has said about, you know, family roles or soul winning or anything you want to call it. They're not following that doctrine. But you, oh, you think they're serving God because they're going to church. Or because, no, they don't serving God. Who are they serving? Their own belly. That's what they're serving. And Bible says, you know, Bible talks about being gluttonous, you know. So they're serving their own belly and by good words. They know how to say the right things. They say good words, fair speeches. Oh, do you know, we're, we're going to do our own soul in a different way. This is the way we're going to do it. Oh, you know what we're going to do? Well, this is what I'll do with my children. If this one is not working out, guess what? I'll even pay money and put them in a nice public school. You know? I mean, they'll have good words and fair speeches. Guess who they'll deceive? The simple. So how do you not become simple? Go read Proverbs. Wisdom is calling all the, uh, the simple people. All you simple people, come, get wisdom so you can have life. But if you don't have wisdom, you don't have the word of God in you, they deceive you. They deceive you easily with their good words and fair speeches. But who are they serving? Their own belly. Where are they? Walking, walking, walking. Serving their own belly. That's what the Bible says. Mark them and avoid them. Because it's leprous. I don't want the church to be infected with leprosy. Look at Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. Galatians 6 verse 1. The so Bible says, Brethren, brethren. Oh, you didn't repeat it. I'm repeating. Sorry. Galatians 6 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So, if somebody is overtaken in a fault, remember, the Bible says, confess our faults one to another. That means, oh, I'm into this thing, or I'm into that thing. See, I just like stealing, or I just like, I don't care what you the fault is. If he comes and confesses with, with you, hey, try and restore him. Tell him Bible verses to read. Say, hey, I, you know, I'll, I'll support you with this or let's start this fellowship. Or, you know, try to restore that guy and, you know, but you be careful. Do it in meekness. You be careful because you're dealing, you're now the priest. Okay, you have leprosy. You think the priest was just going hugging the guy. Hey, guy, come, let me hug him. Don't worry, brother. I know it's leprosy, but is it cold? Let me, let me. no, the priest was like, okay, <laughs> Consider so you said you don't get infected. That's why I read the whole chapter. Please read the Bible, it's important, and see how it applies to us spiritually. You say, Oh, we're no more priests. All the priesthood and Levi, this thing is gone. Jesus is our high priest, but you too are a priest, right? So, God is saying, Be careful, least less, uh, less ye thou also be tempted. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 6. The Bible says, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he had received of us. Are you seeing? It just sounds like leprosy, unclean, unclean, unclean. Withdraw. Because they are now living in sin. It's more dangerous when he's a believer. The same chapter, look at verse 14. Verse 14 says, And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, not that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. I, I, I mean, do, do I need more Bible verses? Let's just move on. Open to Revelation chapter 3. Leprosy spreads easily in areas of poverty. Leprosy spreads easily in areas of poverty. Where people are poor, they, I mean, like, let's just say the hood, something like that. You know what I mean? Like, no water or, in fact, the hood is even nice in America. Talk about like, like African called third world countries. <laughs> You know, when there's a cholera, just break ahead, the whole town has it. Because everybody's bathing and drinking from the same poor water source that they have. You know, areas of poverty, that's where leprosy spreads. That's you Picture that. You know, people are dirty. People don't have shoes. People don't bath for two days because they're even drinking bathing water. You know, stuff like that. Uh, look at Revelation chapter 3, you're there, verse 14. This is talking about the Laodicean church. is a perfect example of the spread of leprosy. Because they were poor. 
In Revelation 3, verse 14, remember these are spiritual applications. Verse 14, Bible says, And unto the angel of the church of, of the Laodiceans write, These things said, Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works, and thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou, uh, I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold or, nor hot, I will speed thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I mean, look at this description. Physically, it fits third world countries, right? They are wretched. They are miserable. I mean, their best clothes are when the NFL game, the guy lost in the Super Bowl, so they've already made all those clothes, so they ship it to them. <laughs> That's the new clothes they wear, right? Oh, but I've been giving money to Red Cross, uh, and the CEO is making $200 million an hour, uh, say an hour, a year, and shipping them what? Used clothes? Yeah. <laughs> Just, in fact, let's focus. All right. Wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. I mean, I've seen some of them flies stopping their eyes so much they don't even talk, touch the fly anymore. I, I, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even playing. I'm serious. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm actually, you see how flies all over their body, walking on their face. And they just continue as their life. Because it's no, no use anymore. You keep doing it for the rest of your life. <laughs> so that is how they are spiritually. So you see these people? That's how God looked at the Laodicean church and saw them. It's like, guys, what's going on? You guys think you're rich? You guys think you have all these things, but you are wretched, poor, uh, wretched, miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in, in the fire, and that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Okay, so it goes on and on. My point is, this is a church. This is brethren that are poor in the spirit. So what's spreading? Leprosy. What's spreading? See, they don't have shoes. Why? Because they have not equipped themselves with the readiness to spread the gospel. They don't share the gospel. So they're walking without shoes. They don't have clothes. They are naked. Showing their nakedness physically and spirit. I mean, <laughs> you know, they just... Spiritually, so leprosy just spreads easily. Somebody just has to come in with leprosy, and that's it. The church is spread. A little level leavens the whole lump. That's why we focus on all these things, so that we don't end up like them. So that we, we, we stay the spread of leprosy. All right, let's move on. Leprosy is curable. Open to 1 John chapter 1. Leprosy is curable. As I said in the beginning, it is a bacterial infection. Amen? Sin also is forgivable. You can be forgiven. Oh, once I have leprosy, my life is over. I saw a symptom. It, it broke out on my face. My life is over. Oh, pastor said once you have leprosy, you're dead. No, it's bacterial infection. It's not even viral. It's curable. It is for. It can be forgiven. Sin can be forgiven. So you have leprosy. The priest is supposed to check you. You know if it's going. Obviously, the person has leprosy. Is not just continue believing. I'm sure he's bathing twice a day or three times a day. In fact, because <laughs> he doesn't want to kept be kept outside the camp. He's making sure he's very clean. He's keeping himself clean. So once it breaks out or something, then on your point, you start keeping yourself clean because it, I said, Pastor, the priest is coming to check you in seven days. Right? So, you two, you give yourself time. You see, you need time too. You give yourself time and you're praying and keeping yourself clean. How do you keep yourself clean? You know, reading your Bible, praying, attending church, meditating on the Word of God, singing the hymns, keeping yourself focused. Whatsoever is good. Whatsoever is good. Is there any praise? Is there any virtue? Think on these things. Turn off the TV, throw it away. Or just focus to make sure you're clean so that that leprosy will die out. Let it be a white scalp or scar or something. Alright, so sin is forgivable. As believers, our sins are blotted away by faith. Now, I'm not saying once you have uh, um, sin, if, it's, if, you don't, if your sin is not forgiven, as a believer, you're going to hell. No. We've established that. I don't want to preach on you know, eternal life. Eternal life is eternal. You cannot lose your salvation. But you can have sin and God will punish you here on earth. Amen? With leprosy and you will die. Then you go to heaven. First uh, John chapter 1, you're there in verse 8 and 9. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, forgiveness here is to avoid the earthly punishment, as I said, uh, and losing, and to avoid losing your rewards. Excuse me. Now, for unbelievers, they can also be forgiven. 
Oh, it's just for No, unbelievers can also be forgiven. I mean, um, I think it's in Acts chapter. Let's open to Acts chapter two. I will remember it. Acts chapter two, verse. What did when they asked Peter? Whoa! So what must we do? Yeah, verse thirty-seven. So Peter's preaching after he spoke with tongues and all the other disciples. So, so what, uh, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So see, their sins can be forgiven. Unbelievers, these are people, these are not just the children of the people that said crucify him. These are the people that said crucify him. <laughs> you know? And they said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. But they were still forgiven. 3,000 were forgiven, were added, baptized, added to the church. And that time Peter preached 5,000 uh, men were, you know, believed, the Bible says. So these are people that committed, that killed Jesus. I mean, what, what sin did you do? You killed somebody? I mean, these people actually killed Jesus. <laughs> So I, I don't know what, I mean, they committed a greater sin than Pontius Pilate, as Jesus said. But look at what, they still got saved. They still were added to the church. Amen? So, um, your unbeliever's sin can be forgiven. Have compassion on them. Save them. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So, uh, yeah, they're saying, but if you reject God, God could also reject you. I mean, talking about to unbelievers now. And once he rejects you, he'll give you up to your own laws and your leprosy will just eat up your whole body. I mean, you're just gone. So, leprosy, as I said, is a simple, in quotation though, simple bacterial infection, but it can end up as a deadly viral disease. And it could end up irreversible and incurable. You get to a certain point, uh, it's too late. I mean, you've lost your fingers. Uh, I mean, it's too late. So, early detection is essential. Early detection is essential. That's why people that easily win, that you can win their soul, are children. Why? Leprosy, some symptoms are not even showing. <laughs> Sin is already in their life. No symptom is showing yet. Nothing. They're still young. I mean, maybe they tried. I remember, okay, maybe I shouldn't confess my sins. But, <laughs> okay, it's not a big deal. So, I, I, obviously, our parents told me no smoking, right? So, I, you know, when I feel hard, so took paper, we rolled the paper, we lighted it with matches. <gasps> we're just smoking dust. <laughs> there was no, nothing was inside the paper. It's not weed or anything I'm talking about. This I'm talking about when I was a child. I'm talking primary school or grade. I don't know what grade is here in America. So, when I was a child, I mean, we're all feeling hard, smoking smoke. <sighs> No effects. You see my teeth brown or anything. No effect. My lips still red, I believe. I don't know. It's a long time I checked. But you don't see black lips or black gum or anything because the effects are not necessarily showing. The symptoms are necessarily showing. When children are young, they can get into different kinds of sins. The leprosy, the early detection is fine. Children are easy for their souls to be win, well, <laughs> to be won. Um, and young people, when you go preach to them, it's easy. Unless their parents stop you, it's kind of easy for them to be warned. Even Muslims, all they will listen. They listen to the word of God. So any detection is essential. And the Bible, uh, like the Bible commands, you know, to the priest. And we're all priests. We should go. Check it. When it is breaking out, check it. So that you can detect it. Keep the person aside so it doesn't infect other people. And so he can clean himself. In the New Testament church, we are all priests. We are to judge. Oh, why are you judging me? Why are you judging me? Hey, we're trying to help you. We're trying to be priests, don't you? Did you know, that guy tell the priest, why are you checking me? Why are you, you know, why are you doing this? No, he just followed the word of God because that is the commandment of the word of God. He can read it by himself. In Lamentations chapter uh, 3, verse 40, uh, Lamentations 3, verse 40, the Bible says, Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. So you're supposed to search yourself. You're supposed to try yourself. You're supposed to be a priest unto yourself. Because don't wait for another priest. You are a priest. So you have the right to do what, what God says. So search yourself. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, the Bible says, Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So before you go and want to fellowship with the brethren, before you go and now you want to spread, hey, examine yourself. Am I living in sin? Am I doing the wrong thing? Am I, am I living a life worthy of God? I'm going fast here because of time. I'll soon be done though. Then, after you've examined yourself, you checked yourself, then you can examine your brother. In fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, 
2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, the Bible says, Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not, uh, know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. So God said, examine yourself. We are supposed to examine ourselves. Amen. Um, then after you examine yourselves, now you can examine your brother. Judge not, look at what the Bible says, Matthew 7 verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou thy mo thou the mote moat that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. So you see the application as priests, you know, when there's leprosy. Before you start judging somebody in the church and say, hey, I see leprosy, I see leprosy. Check yourself first. And if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. Now, God is saying, if your own is greater than your brother, <laughs> remove your own first. You can't have a big sin in your life that you're trying to remove the small sin in your brother's life. That is the guy that's supposed to be helping you, not you helping the guy. See what I mean? James chapter 5 verse 16, Bible says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So, you have something in your eye. You have, oh, it's not a beam. Yes, it's a small speck in your eye. You know how uncomfortable it is? You know, you're like, can you blow it for me? <laughs> you know, what the, you, that's what you're trying to do. It's very uncomfortable. You're not going to rest until you remove that speck from your eye. So, go to your brother and confess your faults. See, I was, I, 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 no one told me about this carpentry thing. I was trying. Next is something that my eye. Or you have, um, what is it called? Splinter. Right? You know, you're trying. Sometimes you need to actually enjoy yourself to remove the splinter. Right? So it's not going to be fun. Your eye will be red after this. God is saying, this is what you have to do. Somebody can help you. Confess your faults one to another. Bible says in Proverbs 27 verse 5. It's not fun, right? Proverbs 27 verse 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Bet the guy is going to hurt you to remove that splinter, but that is better than just saying, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it, it does not help you. <laughs> it does not help you. But you're a nice guy. You know, in fact, even give him small, you know, cake or something. Just eat, relax, ice cream. He's going to be fine. He's gonna be... No, the guy that comes with knife, right? An alcohol swipe or something. And you're like, ah! Yeah, that guy's the guy that loves you. That's the guy that loves you. Open rebuke is better than secret love. All right. Look at uh, some judging lessons from Leviticus 13. I've probably given all of them. But someone clean does the judging, right? Someone with the knowledge of God's word is needed to do the judging. Because the priest had to memorize, or not memorize, but the priest has to have knowledge of Leviticus 13. Know what step to take. Okay, is it white? Is it this? Is the flesh, quick raw flesh coming out? You have to have the knowledge of God in order to do the judging. So, judging is for the good of the society. Oh, I, I, since that is life, life is life. I'm not going to touch him. No, it's not for his own good only. It's for the good of the society. Shut him up for seven days. Why? B because you just like him shut up? No, it's because you like and uh, you don't want people to be infected. Oh, let him cry unclean, unclean. Are you trying to embarrass him? No, you just don't want people to be infected. You say, Pastor is trying to embarrass me. Pastor, uh, you know. No, it is for other people too. It's for the church. I'm not looking out just for you. I'm looking out for the whole church. That's just what judging is for. And what is being judged? Leprosy. Sin is what is being judged. Oh, we're all sinners. Oh, so the priest, you know, he can never have leprosy. He can also have leprosy if he's not clean. But that's why priests they have to wash themselves, do all this washing and washing and washing. So bad that like, the Pharisees think you have to wash your hand before you eat. You know, um, that, that, that's part of the law of God. I mean, that's a good thing to do, but God did not command that as a law. Because all these washings and washings and washings. Open your Bibles to Jude. There are some sins that should, uh, sorry, there are some sins that should be, that should not be in the church, I should say. Um, I, I didn't write it down well here. I should not be in the church. Okay, anyway, open to Jude. So, there are some things that should not be in church, and the pastor is supposed to send them out. Uh, so, because of the relationships that are in the church, I'm concluding. We are priests of God to the unbelievers. 
I already read this before in Jude chapter 1 verse 22. And for some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Back in Leviticus chapter 13, that explains all of that with the garments, what you do with the reddish garment. Because of time, I'm just I'm not going to read all of that. So as priests, we are to reconcile unbelievers to God. And this is the ministry that God handed to us. As you can see in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18. In conclusion, some people consider the name leper as, you know, derogatory or offensive. You know, why are you calling me a leper? But that is the actual title, you know, the leper. You know, the politically correct term of leper, like instead of calling somebody a leper, the politically correct term in the world we live in now is a person affected with leprosy. I, I don't even know what <laughs> difference <laughs> <laughs> but that's basically if somebody is actually a leper and he's in the hospital and you walk in the hospital or something, don't call a person a leper. You just say, Oh, he's affected with leprosy. You know, it's just like you have a headache, right? And you say, Oh, you know, I, I, the headache is in my head. Like, <laughs> anyway, let's move on. <laughs> it helps you emotionally and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, maybe there are some benefits of it. But it's carrying over spiritually. What do I mean by that? It, 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 this sinful generation we live in, they are changing the names of sins. You know, sins that we're supposed to judge and say, hey, you need to stay away. Hey, I can see leprosy in your body. Sins are supposed to judge. They are changing the name. People don't want to be called sinners anymore. What do they want to be called? And they say, we're all sinners, so don't call me a sinner. Don't call me this name or that name. You know, they change the name of lying. Oh, I didn't lie. I was just, you know, joking. You know, I was just joking. You lied. Oh, but I was just joking. But it was a lie. Mm -hmm. You see? They, so they changed that. They changed stealing to long fingers. Oh, he has long fingers. What, what does that mean? You know, he stole. He steals. Right? So, but he has long fingers. Uh, somebody has a busy body. Oh, he's just overzealous. <laughs> He's of Azalus, he's just, he wants to get everything. No, you're a busybody, right? Uh, fornication, oh, they're just living in. They're, sh they're shacking up or anything. You know, living in is like a high class one. They're shacking up, you know. They're just, you know, living together. Uh, do you have a problem with it? Mind your own business, right? But you're pointing out the leprosy that's going to affect the church. Oh, but how's that your business? They come to church, they praise God, they go back. Is it your business? No. Are they living in your house? So, um, adultery, affair. Oh, you know, just had, uh, they had an affair. Abortion, choice. And she, she used her choice. And what? She aborted a baby or she killed a baby? No. In fact, abortion is even a nice way of saying she murdered. But they, they didn't even want to say abortion. You know, people out there saying, what's, what what they say? My body, my choice. My body, my choice. I mean, what are they saying? I have the right to kill this baby. I have the right to kill this baby. I must leave me, give me, let me have, that's what they're saying. But they change it to choice. Sodomy, this one is really nice. Sodomy is now called alternate lifestyle. Is that alternate? These people have an alternate lifestyle. Really? I see that there's a choice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it's an alternate lifestyle. You know, yeah, the alternate lifestyle. I mean, you listen to news, uh, this is what they say because they can't say sodomy anymore. Because if they say sodomy, what will happen? Everybody be like, where did that word come from? You only find it in the Bible. Okay, so let's go in the Bible. What happened? Oh, they got killed by God. No, nah, I don't like that name. Let's call it alternate lifestyle. That seems better. <laughs> like, it, so this is what is happening. The word leper is no more politically correct. And look at all these sins. They are no more politically correct. You know, back then, you see Sodom used easily. Now, you don't even hear it anymore. So sin can be likened unto leprosy. Leprosy is a death sentence. The wages of sin is death. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us about leprosy, a picture of sin. I pray, Lord, um, in our study of this, you continue to enlighten us concerning leprosy. Uh, as we close from today, I pray you be with us in all our activities the rest of the week. Daddy, continue to um, uh, help us and protect us and bring us back here for the next time we meet to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name I pray.